Hey Siri, time 28 minutes. <laughs> All right, Canon timer's on. We on. Roll the credits. It's becoming a bit of a theme, isn't it? You know, even when we get, even when we get better cameras or one better camera, that one there. Yeah. I still think we should keep it. <laughs> It's becoming quite a nice little interlude, you know, halfway through the podcast. Oh, we've got to change the cannon and restart it. Yeah. I don't think it's such a bad thing, to be honest with you. It's not. It breaks it, it gives up. Us, it gives us a chance to have a breather. Yeah. Um, although it'd be nice to maybe not be dictated to when we do the, the, the change. It would, and it would make the editing process a hell of a lot easier <laughs> as well. <laughs> it would, it would. Anyway, here we are. Welcome back to the Creative Pursuit podcast, uh, brought to you by Northern Powerhouse Media. I'm Adam Burkett. And I'm Scott Edwards. Um, and this is episode number three. The first episode we've recorded since the whole Creative Pursuit has gone live on yep. YouTube and the podcast world yeah. of Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It's all out there in the world, and it's quite exciting. It's been, it's been a fun week, actually. It's been very fun. Um, to hear, hear people's feedback and... Um, just to know it's out there, because we've been working on this quite a long time. And when, when did we start putting content together for this? Uh, I think it was probably November time we started. Was it really? Film, <laughs> was yeah. It? Bloody hell. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, feral whack. So, yeah. we've now live on the YouTube channel with about four videos or so. I think there's six. Six videos. Or oh, four videos and two podcasts. Okay, so four yeah. videos. Um, and they're a range of... Um, so we've got a, like a what's in your camera bag kind of thing, which is a bit geeky. Yeah. Um, there's an editing video, which is... Also geeky. Ultra geeky, uh, <laughs> how to edit some certain types of photographs. Um, and then there's uh, a couple of more nice philosophical conceptual sort of videos about printing your photographs and the importance of that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, finishing your work. And there'll be more of a mix of things as we get going with it as well. And I think that is one of the key things for, for today's episode as well, just to have a little reflection moment now that our content is out in the world. And sort of revisit what our targets were, our objectives were in terms of the the channel and the podcast. Yep. And you know, we've always said from the beginning we're going to make tweaks as we go. Yep. And uh, and review things. And we've had some feedback from. Well, it's people. like what we said in the first episode: done is better than perfect. And I think some was it Aiden sent us a picture of that as well. Yeah. Um, done is better than perfect because perfect. He's never crossed done. out someone else's quote and put the <laughs> MPM logo. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is quite like, yeah, yeah. Um, like that. But we should have called the podcast that actually we should have <laughs> but God um, is better than perfect but it again proves as to there is no right time to start summer and the best thing to do is just get going with it and learn as you do it yeah i saw um in fact my wife sent me a, a meme not a meme a um a little reel from facebook okay. yesterday and it was um talking about how they've done a study about um about how to get good at something and they split this class, uh, it's a ceramics class, and they split this class into two halves. So half of the class were told to make one amazing ceramic thing yep. and plan it properly and produce it beautifully and spend all their efforts on one thing. Yep. And the other was told, are we, are we recording? I just have to double check. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the, other was t- the other half of the class was told, make as many as you can. Right. right? Don't worry about quality, quantity. Yeah. So it was quality versus quantity was this 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 test, and um, e- so the one that made one made this single thing, and the one that made as many as they could made loads, and the ones that they made were better than the one that did one right. because they did so many of them. They've they learned got along good. the way. Yeah, you're learning things every single time you make it. So just yeah. start. Yeah, just get going, and you'll figure it out on the journey. Yeah, and we are far from perfect at doing this. But we're just going to keep doing it until we get good. Yeah. That's as basically as it. Anyone that ever gets good at anything, they just, it's because they're doing it all of the time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we've got a couple of things to talk about today. We'll start with our, our standard what have we been up to stuff. Mm-hmm. So busy week as ever at Northern Powerhouse Media. Yeah. What have you been doing? There's been a lot of editing of product shots. Um, so we did a product shot shoot in a studio couple of weeks ago uh, and this week has been editing all of those uh, so there's been a lot of fine details and careful pixel peeping inside Lightroom um, and then we've had a few um, real estate 
shoots thrown in between that. There's been about four or five, I think, yeah. this week, hasn't there? Yeah. Quite a lot of big, tasty houses, actually. Yeah. yeah. Good very, very nice indeed. I've been working on um, some upcoming projects. So we're on the road a lot next week. We are. Um, we're working for a client in the construction industry who have sites um, where they're installing really, really cool eco-friendly retaining wall systems yep. to replace you know, concrete and stuff with really green stuff. We're working with them a lot now, and they want us to document a lot of their installations at various building sites all around the UK. And we mean all around the UK. <laughs> so we go as far as, we've been as far as Devon. Loch Lomond. Loch Lomond. We go all over the place. Next week we've got, where are we going? So we're doing... South Wales? No. Oh, maybe we are. <laughs> Should I check the diary? We're basically all over the place. It, there's a lot of travel next <laughs> week. <laughs> uh, where's the diary? Where's the calendar? Here we are. So Monday the 6th, we are going to Redditch in the afternoon. Oh, so we have some headshots in the morning. Yep. Then we are going to go to Redditch in the afternoon, shoot on site at a building construction site in Redditch in the afternoon. We're then driving to Peterborough, staying in Peterborough overnight on Monday night. Then we're shooting in Peterborough on Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. Yep. And then we're getting back for a sh another shoot in Macclesfield on Tuesday afternoon. So it's got a busy 48 hours. We've then got a day where I've got a couple of... We've also got twilight shoots that evening. What? Yep. <laughs> Who did this? <laughs> oh, my good luck. Well, you're doing the twilight. There's two, so we'll do one. Oh, each. my God. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Really busy couple of days. Then on Wednesday, I've got two real estate shoots whilst you spend the day locked in a darkened uh, room editing, editing all this all stuff. Of this. <laughs> um, then Thursday, we're back out on the road and we're in Scotland. <laughs> For the day. For the day. Back the same day. But that one's really exciting. Yeah. So the Mountain Bike World Championships is taking place in Scotland yeah. this summer. And the company that are doing all these installations, a company called Gravitas, very, very cool company. Check them out. Stick the link in the bio and stuff. Um, we're going up there yep. and we're going to install time-lapse cameras for the next 90 days or something right. like that. So we're going to have a lot of photos <laughs> to edit after I mean, that I'm, one. You don't edit each one individually, sure. No, 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 no. <laughs> we do have to get rid of the ones at night and yeah. stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah, I'd not thought of that. Um, so we've got to do all that and we've got to... Oh, oh yeah, so I mean, it, they're basically building the downhill uh, mountain bike tracks with this product. Yeah. Super cool. So by the time the, the World Championships happen in July, I think it's July, um, they'll all be green and vegetated and it'll just be part of the earth, you know. Yeah, it'll Whereas look completely natural. It'll look amazing. Yeah. So we've got to do before, during and after. So we get to go and film a load of mountain biking. Loads of mountain biking. Excellent. And also we've got to visit this place in Scotland three times in the next three months. <laughs> So lots going on. It's very busy. At I the also moment, had a yeah. really very exciting meeting yesterday with a, a, with a client we've worked for a couple of years called Unwasted. Yep. Um, Unwasted are another extremely green, socially and environmentally conscious company who um, do this incredible process whereby they turn used cardboard into wood. It's yep. like an MDF replace, replacement, but it's got no toxins and it's all completely green. And they're trying to change. They're genuinely trying to change the world with this product. Yeah, and then that is used to make like things furniture, that you, flooring. You yeah, exactly. All that kind yeah. of stuff. They've already got significant investment. They've opened a, a factory up in in. Although they've got plans to open a factory in Denmark. Yeah. And they want to do many more factories globally and really sort of make a massive global impact with this product. And we are their media team, which is super exciting. They want us to create two videos in the next couple of months. We just have a complete mix of different stuff which is I don't know. it's crazy like, it's so exciting yeah i am buzzing at the moment about the work we've, we've got on yeah plus we've got this new podcast and, and <laughs> yeah we've got all our own channel. stuff we've got, we've got, that. We've got to try and squeeze in some time to create our own content where do we well. sleep yeah who needs sleep <laughs> we'll sleep later so yeah lots going on at the moment very very exciting um but as we said i think this w this, is, this is the first podcast since we went live. Yeah, so the podcast and YouTube channel went live. What day is it? Is it Friday today? Mm. On Wednesday, two days ago. Yeah, uh, and it's we've had a lot of positive stuff back from it, which is very some exciting. really lovely comments and feedback from people listening. So if you have offered feedback to us, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, we really appreciate. I mean, it. we prefer not the bad stuff. 
If it's constructive, I'm all <laughs> we'll for it. We'll take them, constructive. Man. We'll take constructive. Uh, and it hasn't been any bad, actually. It has been constructive uh, and positive, yeah. which is really, really nice. So we got a couple. Of, should we read a couple? Yeah, read a few out. Yeah. Um, so, Aidan, who we work with, uh, one of our fantastic clients, he um, messaged this morning. Well, actually, I'll start with another one. Um, someone messaged me the other day saying that they loved it. Um, let me say exactly what it says. Listen to both episodes of your new podcast today. First episode was much more relevant to me, I suppose, because I don't have a scooby about tech within the creative world. But overall, top stuff. Was great hearing about how well Northern Powerhouse Media is going. I'm hoping your podcast burst the creative bubble I have in me alive. No pressure. So it's inspired him a little bit. That's um, good. But it was interesting to hear what he said about, you know, the second episode not being quite as relevant to him. So yep. we quite, by accident, it should be said. <laughs> it's easily done for us. We, we, we've <laughs> got to keep an eye on this. We, we just went off on one about cameras and yeah. stuff because we just bought a new camera that morning. We were trialling it out for the first time. It's this one here, if you're watching on YouTube. Um, and, you know, we, we geeked out for a good 10, 15 minutes. And we're not quite sure. We're just trying to find our we're feet. We're trying to find our feet. It. Yeah. We well, don't know really what we want to talk about and what people want to hear. And at the moment, we're just trying to throw stuff out there and find what works. Exactly. And what we don't want to do is turn people off by boring people if they're not interested in certain subject matter. But at the same time, we want to be quite natural and talk about the things that we want to talk about that are relevant to us. Yep. I think the fundamental is creativity, which is what this is all about and how it affects our daily lives. Yep. It affects everybody. And we happen to express our creativity via the means of photo and video most of the time yep. and podcasting. Um, and so it's okay for us to talk about that, I think. But what I think we will do in future, if we are going to geek out, is maybe make it a bit of a bonus episode. Yeah. Or even well, Geek say, alert. A geek alert, exactly. <laughs> we, we need a sound <laughs> effect <laughs> for a geek <laughs> alert. Thing. Right, that's next one, next, we'll one. Have, next week we'll have one. So we'll have a sound <laughs> effect so that... You know, we're letting you know, and we're not pretending that all of our content is for everybody, but we do want to keep it broad yeah. so that it's engaging for everyone most of the time. Yeah. And um, we have mentioned that we're going to have guests. This was supposed to be a guest This podcast. is a bit of a bonus episode. This is a squeezed yeah, in bonus. Between everything else, we've managed to squeeze another one in. Yeah. Well, we wanted to come on and just talk a little bit. Now we are live, really. Yeah. And the fact that, you know, we've had some We've feedback. actually had people listening, so it's nice to exactly almost get a feel of where this podcast is starting to exactly, go. Exactly, exactly. So we had that first piece of feedback. And I was like, hmm, maybe. And and my wife said similar things. She was like, it's a bit geeky. There's a lot of camera chat that I don't understand. Yeah. And it's relevant feedback. But then Aidan text um, this morning, actually, and said, just listen to episode two, loving the podcast. I think it's a fantastic idea, a fantastic concept. Um, I know you mentioned about geeking out too much, but I loved it. Now, Aiden isn't, a camera dude. Yeah. He's not a photographer. He's not going to listen to it. But it's interesting. He loved it. Um, so it's really, really good to hear. He said, I am not a geek, um, but it's such a chill podcast and just a really cool li everyday listen. Um, we've learned some great bits from it and had some great little yeah. takeaways. It's, yeah. lo it's lovely to hear. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think the other thing that for us, we should sort of say like right from the off, we wanted this to be a very much bish bash bosh kind of podcast. We are very busy. We've yeah. just mentioned yeah. we cannot we spend want to sit hours. down, record, and upload it as quick as we can. Really, exactly. We do not have the time, resources, and energy, and all the rest of it to spend ages editing, post production, blah blah blah, tying it together with stuff. Everything you hear from the music and everything, yeah, it's all live. Yeah, and then when we're done, we press stop, and then we just make sure that it sounds okay, and we just upload it. Yeah, and then you do a quick camera edit. Yep. Yeah. Which you're saying is really quick new live edit sort of way. Yeah, of doing you could do multi cam edits. Oh, so you edit, stick it all it. into one clip, it's that easy. Apart from timing that Canon R6. Pesky. Pesky R6 in the middle there. Um, oh, Who's this? Someone at the door. It's next door. Next door. Emergency over. Someone walked in. Did they? <laughs> I thought <laughs> that they did. happens quite <laughs> a lot. People just walk into our office. Um, so that was a lovely piece of feedback as well. Um, and I had one as well from a guy I. When I started doing photography, I, I went and did a night class. Yeah, uh, Rosie signed me up for Rosie. She signed me up for a night class to get me out of the house, and because I wanted to do this thing, so I got obsessed with photography. And I yeah. met a guy there called Steve. He was a fantastic, fantastic bloke. Hi, Steve, if you're listening. Um, and Steve messaged me the other day, 
saying, morning, Adam, bit of feedback. Love the podcast, great content. Looking forward to listening to episode two and future episodes. It's made me want to pick up my camera again. Had a lot going on the last few months. My mum has been really poorly, so my creative juices have totally dried up, but I feel inspired. I look at Scott's Instagram too, stunning stuff, and the work that you do for stories is just top draw, keeps getting better. Good luck with the podcast, gave you five stars on Apple Podcasts. What a top bloke. Amazing. Thanks so much, Steve. Yeah, thank really you. Appreciate it. It's so lovely to hear that. Um, and it's, it's nice to hear that this kind of, it's not a bodge, but like just as it happens It's nice live. to know that it's a little bit inspiring to people as well. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if you're a creative person or not, we all like to be inspired in different ways. And if we can help do that in some way or another, that's amazing. It is amazing. And, and you know, we've got a whole bunch of listeners now already. Yeah. And if they'd all like to go and give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. That would be nice. <laughs> and uh, and hit, hit the subscribe. Yes, yeah, definitely. Whilst you're at it, go to YouTube. And do the same there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, thanks very much for everyone who's who's offered feedback. And, and we, we, we really want to hear anything you've got to say about what we're doing. Yeah, it's massively appreciated. It is. So, um... We wanted to talk a little bit about music this week, didn't we? Mm. And uh, obviously, we're learning a lot doing this podcast. Did we want to mention that first? I've kind of gone a little bit ahead, I yeah. think. So talk about a little bit about what we've learned in this short amount of time of having our own podcasts. It's, it's funny because you don't often listen to yourself, do you? It's really weird listening to yourself talk. And everyone hates it. Yep. In the same way that every time we do headshots, some, everyone walks into the room and goes, I hate having my photo taken. <laughs> And it's the same if sort I had of a thing. pound for every person that said that. Unbelievable. It's literally, it's like um, headshot bingo. Isn't yeah. It? I mean, someone, yeah. Someone walks in the door. Yeah. Within 30 seconds yeah, of walking through the door. The <laughs> um, but yeah, with, with with this, when you listen to your own voice, you notice things. Yeah. And we... we, we We've both said this week, yeah. What, what did so. you... So what, what, what were your takeaways then from hearing, hearing our podcasts? So I feel like I stumble and pause quite a lot. And that's just me, I think, because naturally I'm not a great talker, I don't think. <laughs> it's so rubbish. Honestly, that's such rubbish. I, on it, Jenny, I, that's how I feel. But that's like, what, that's because what's I'm so funny Because I'm so introverted. It. Yeah. But it doesn't come across like that to me. Like, when I hear you on podcasts, I, I think you're very conscious of what you're saying, very deliberate mm. and no mumbling. And you talk very clearly and you enunciate very, very well. Whereas me, by contrast, I speak at a thousand miles an hour all the time. So I don't think, no. And I feel like I mumble. And I skip over words to get to my point quite a lot. Right. Do you know what I mean? That, yeah. That's my own feedback of myself. Um, so, it, so we're learning, so, aren't we? So like I pause to get to my point, you say more words yeah. to get to your point. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the opposite. So. Uh, yeah. Well, you yeah. know, we'll, we'll, let's see how it goes. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm conscious of it now, so I'm going to try my best yeah. to talk a little slower, not to rush what I'm trying to say. Because I get excited and yeah. I talk fast and, you know. Um, but um, but yeah, it's a learning it's, curve. It is. It's very bizarre how we all see ourselves. Exactly. And it's like we were saying before about the... Um, just do it until you get good at it. Yeah. Thing. This yeah. is what we're doing. I found the same a few years ago when I started my YouTube channel. Mm. And I sat down in front of a camera for the first time. And I'm like, what do I say to this camera? And then I watch it back. And it just look, it looks bizarre and it sounds bizarre. And you've got to try and edit it into something that people might potentially watch. And yeah. it's And you learn what works, right? Yeah. Because yeah. people give you feedback and you see your, your viewings or your listenings yeah. going up. You know, and that's how we're going to get better at it. Exactly. And we're yeah. not going to just sit here and prototype and practice and practice and practice. We might as well practice and stick it out to the world. Exactly, yeah. And see what happens. Exactly. And yeah. we've developed our podcast setup even more. We have. We've introduced a light. There's a big light. So we've got a big, big octobox. Yeah. You can't see it because it's behind all the cameras, but we felt like, um, oh, we just get it better, eh? Yeah. So each week there will be something... Yeah. Just to take it that could step be a further. nice little competition. Spot the difference. <laughs> what have we done this week? Yeah. We won't say anything, but you have to go onto the YouTube channel and see yeah. what we've added. <laughs> but anyway, we going back to what I was going to say, we wanted to chat about music a little bit, didn't we? Yeah. Well, music's important to both of us. Yeah. Um, potentially in completely different ways. Yep. Um, but it, we both feel it's quite relevant, certainly to the sake of creativity for us. Yep. Um, and we've got different stories to tell us about. So do you want to start us off? Um, yeah. So I think I was quite late introduced to music. 
which is a little bit sad because I'm still find myself exploring it now. Um, but I was kind of brought up listening. My dad listened to the Smiths and things like that, very Manchester-based music, the Verve, Oasis, typical stuff like that. Um, so I kind of got introduced to it like that. And then when I was probably 12, 13, picked, I persuaded my dad to buy a guitar. He was thinking of buying a guitar to learn how to play. Uh, and I thought, that's quite cool. I like guitar music. So... Um, he was on an iron mother to buy it in this guitar shop. And I said, buy it. Because I wanted to learn how to play. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so then I ended up playing this Thanks guitar. Dad. Enjoy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I ended up playing this guitar more than my dad. Yeah. Um, and just got interested in it that way and couldn't put it down really. In the same way I can't put cameras down now. Yeah. Um, I was obsessed with it and just learn how to play every single Oasis and Noel Gallagher track that I could. Wow. Um, and then got into a couple of different bands started trying to write music mm -hmm. you didn't you do a course in songwriting? yeah i did a a, a two-year course at uni at a music college in yeah. manchester um called bim yeah um british and irish modern music uh yeah did a two-year songwriting course which was great fun mm. but that's what got me into doing more photography and video again which is weird so how did that come about because i was as i was starting to make my own music um I, I i was trying to put it out there on social media and stuff just to it was what i needed to do for the course really mm. um so i started picking a camera up again and making content and found my love for that again and got back around to me so music does it give you or has it given you the same um creative um payoff or benefit not as photography a, videography has. I don't think it does as a creator, but as a consumer, yes. That's really interesting. Yeah. Like So why not why not as a creator? I think it did for a little while, but then I I found what I felt was my benchmark and I wasn't gonna get any better. Mm -hmm. Um I wasn't I'm never i I've never been a great musician. I enjoyed it. Did open mics and was in a couple of bands. I loved it. But um as a creator, I it wasn't for me. Mm. So it maybe would you say that like it was potentially like a stepping stone to the right creative outlet? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it, yeah, it got me back doing what I enjoyed. So how most. how did that bridge happen? And how did you go from music to videography? Because I I did photography and video as a kid. Well, mainly photography. Yeah. Um, and then I I kind of lost my way with it a bit. I just didn't pick the camera up. Uh, and then as I was doing the music stuff and making content, I found my love for making stuff again. And gotcha. just got drawn down that path and started making YouTube videos. So it was YouTube. Yeah, was the was the output yeah. of your videography yeah. to start when you got back into it. Yeah, and then I found That's people amazing. like Casey Neistat, who's an American filmmaker, mm -hmm. Peter McKinnon, a Canadian photographer, yeah. and just got drawn down that path and yeah. became obsessed with it. Mm. And that's where we are now. We're still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're still in that. Yeah, so but but music, I think, for, is a consumable thing for me like it's a complete escape is that how you use music as an escape then yeah yeah i i could just sit in an escape empty from what is it I like to de-stress or is it like because you want to be taken get your mind off things what was it i think it probably is getting my mind off things i've always been an overthinker mm -hmm. uh, so, um, anything i make or anything i do i'm overthinking it mm -hmm. um that, i mean it's important to say that's not a negative. No, it's not a negative. It can that be that means you, you create amazing yeah. stuff. It can be a positive, yeah. yeah it depends yeah. how you channel exactly it, Exactly, right. Um, but yeah, I, I guess music is kind of a way just to try and get away from thinking about things for a while. So I could literally just sit in an empty room, lying on the floor, staring at the ceiling, listening to music, and I'd be in my element. Mm -hmm. I love it. So how do you listen to music? Headphones? Big speakers? I don't think you can beat big speakers. Yeah. Yeah. Sound waves passing yeah. through the air. You can feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you go to live shows? Love live music. Yeah. Yeah. What sort of, where where, and what sort of shows? Uh, I, I, I don't think, you, I love the big arena shows. Everyone does. I don't think you can beat the kind of sweaty, intimate gigs where there's about 500 people. It's, 
even if everyone's dancing around like a lunatic, I'm stood still staring at the stage. Yeah. Listening <laughs> to the music. Because you're just into the yeah, music. Yeah, I love the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I'm kind of the same. I'm not actually a big fan of the big arena stuff, yeah. generally. They're, they're generally in big sheds. You went to one last night. I did go to one <laughs> last night. I, well, they're generally in big tin sheds that aren't yeah. designed for live music. And the acoustics yeah, yeah, yeah. are terrible. Particularly, yeah. I, I remember going to watch The Who in... Um, at the Emian Arena with my old man about yeah. 25, 30 years ago, a long time ago, probably 25 years ago. And we were sat pretty well. Well, he got tickets on the day because yeah. there were a few left and they were right at the back of the second tier. Yeah. And the sound delay between what you saw and what you heard, yeah. you're so far away, was just absolutely disgusting. Yeah. And the, the quality of the acoustics, obviously technology and live um, production has gone up hugely in that period of time. Yeah. Um, and as, as you say, I was actually out last night um, Went to see the darkness. Yes. <laughs> um, and we bought tickets on a whim on New Year's Eve. Me and Rosie I sat at home watching TV on New Year's Eve. Got a bit pissed and went, oh, I've got live tickets. <laughs> and just bought tickets. And then woke up the next morning and go, what on earth have I bought the tickets darkness. to the darkness for? <laughs> but it's because we saw Justin Hawkins on TV. And I've always been a fan oh, of Justin I love Hawkins. Justin He's Hawkins. a great front man. He's a great personality. Amazing musician. He's funny as well. His voice is is insane. Absolutely obscenely good vocalist. Um, So anyway, and we we, we even like day before yesterday, we were like, should we try and get rid of these tickets? Like we're really busy. We've had a saint. It's crazy week. And I was was in Wales yesterday. Was shooting yesterday. (laughs) Off to Manchester last night. So anyway, we went. Oh my god, it was so good. (laughs) I honestly think one of the best live bands I've ever seen. It was like the closest I will ever get to going to a rock show in the 70s. It was all like the the like rock tropes. Yeah. It was like pyrotechnics and spandex <laughs> and loud guitars and stage dives. He came out at one point on the shoulders of one of the tech guys and <laughs> soloing on the back and got walked <laughs> through the audience. It was just like funny. Yeah. Charming. Just not taking it seriously. Not taking it seriously at all, but like they're not it's not a pastiche of like Queen and and you know, like Jethro Tull, whatever. It's yeah. like it's genuine. They are rock and roll stars, yeah, yeah. and they just rock, and they're, they're fantastic. I can't honestly, brilliant. Oh, I had such a good time, yeah. and you know, being in my forties now as well. They finished at quarter past nine, so I was home by half ten. It was fantastic. <laughs> it was a great bed. night. <laughs> had a great time. Let's do a cannon break. Oh, here we go. So yeah, I had a really good time last night. I am exhausted after this week. It's a band I've never really listened to. My to ears are ringing quite a lot this morning. We had good seats, pretty nice to the front. Yeah. And it was just epic. It was like 75 minutes of just proper rock and roll. If you've not seen it, have a look at Justin Hawkins' YouTube channel. I'm going to. It is brilliant. When I got home last night, I couldn't sleep, so I was wired. <laughs> I was looking at his Instagram and stuff. I was like, oh, he's got, he's so got a podcast. Good. Right, okay, cool. Yeah, it's, it, he will talk about music, and he said he's... He, he will make some really good because he is an amazing musician. He will talk about music in depth. Yeah, but at the same time, he's very he will, knowledgeable. He's yeah. Well, they've been doing it for a long time as well, you know. Yeah, but at the same time as that, he will just have a laugh and not mm. take it seriously. They're, they're a cracking band now. I think I'm a drummer. I, I hope I qualifies me to sort of say that their, their original drummer wasn't quite up to the same level as particularly mm. the two Hawkins brothers. Um, and Frankie on bass is just amazing character. So they've now got Rufus Tiger Taylor yep. in on drums, Ru- Roger Taylor's son. Yeah. And um, it's a perfect fit. Yeah. It, he's a really, really good, good fit. Yeah. And, and it's elevated them. It's almost it's like watching Zeppelin almost. Wow. You know, like in terms of that sort of, particularly when Justin's not got the guitar on, it's like watching, you know, that sort of power quad thing where you've got drums, bass, guitar, and an amazing front man. Yeah. Queen. Um, who else? Uh, you know, Zeppelin is, is sort of the obvious one. Um, Red Hot Chili Peppers. You know, that sort of format. Drums, yeah. bass, guitar. You need an amazing guitarist to carry that with yeah. one guitar. And then when they really stick it up, when, when Justin puts yeah, guitar yeah. as well. It's just... Anyway, yeah. I won't talk any more about it, but highly recommend. Go and see the darkness. Go and see the darkness. Do you have a favourite gig you've ever been to? Yes. Who? Where? Um, my favourite ever gig. It's close. I've been to a lot. I mean, I've... Um, for me, music might have been different. I, I've had a relationship with music that's kind of the other way around to you in terms of photography. So you've been the creator? I've always kind of been, I come from a, quite a musical family. My mum was a piano <coughs> teacher. Um, my dad and my mum met playing 
and singing together at the YHA in London oh, wow. in 1970, whatever. Yeah. Um, and they've, there's always been music in the house growing up. I played piano as a kid. I played violin, saxophone, picked up the sticks to play drums at about eight years old, made a career out of it, um, you know, professionally doing that for 20 years or so. Yeah. Um, so I've got a very complex relationship with music because quite often I don't love music very much at all, yeah, actually. Yeah. Um, I fall in and out of love with it because it's my. It's also a commodity that I sell. Mm. Um, you know, my business is was built on a function band playing other people's music, which is fine for me because I'm not a songwriter. Yeah, doesn't matter if I'm playing a darkness song yeah. or my mate Jim's song. To me, I'm playing so, and I'll always put my own sort of expression on it as a as a kit player. Yeah, but um, it's it's this kind of. Yeah, it's a, it's a complicated relationship, effectively. So quite often, I'll go through periods where I don't listen to music at all, and I'll listen to podcasts and I'll listen to audiobooks and stuff instead, and I'll go through periods of, like, I'm so into music. I'm actually in a real I love music phase. At the right. Moment. My latest thing, I don't know if I told you, I'm buying a turntable and getting yeah, into Yeah, you final. mentioned that, yeah. Because, so it's a bit of a sad story, but I had my record collection stolen um, when I was about 22, and I built up a, a tidy little collection by that point. And it devastated me so much that I couldn't bring myself to restart. So I got into mini discs. I started copying all stuff off my mates, CDs and stuff on my mates onto the mini disc. Yeah. And then Spotify came on us for it. And I, and I think that's been part of the reason why a lot of the time I'm not into music because yeah. for me it's so much more than just a digital download of some single or whatever. For me, I was always into albums. I was into listening to an entire yeah. piece of work. and reading the lyrics along with and, it and holding the sleeve yeah. notes and understanding these people that created this thing. That for me was such an impo- important part of it. Anyway, as part of, we, we're redoing our house and stuff, and as part of that, we want to have a, a room that is kind of like a library kind of music room. Yeah. Just with loads of books, no TVs, just... And so I was like, I'm going to get myself a proper turntable and get yeah. back into this. So it's a long journey. Yeah. And I've already started making a list of albums I'm going to need oh, to really? buy. And I thought, I'll just start with a list of just the essentials. Yeah. It's massive. <laughs> I've not even gone into the kind of like level two or level three, kind of like more spurious, less important, yeah. or like more important to me or whatever. Yeah. We've just got the core and it's like 150 oh. albums or something <laughs> and and i've not even finished i only started writing the list on sunday <laughs> three or four days ago you know what I mean? yeah, by, yeah. by monday it might be another one. i just don't know but it's exciting there's something about vinyl it's fantastic it's, it's, so it's a living cool. thing it's special and it, it is making a comeback really well it's huge it's I, I can't remember the exact stat i might look it up in a minute but um i think vinyls um Vinyl cells are now bigger than they have been at any point in the last 30 yeah. years or something. Yeah. They're growing all the time. I think it links back to because music isn't really attached to anything. Now. You just have it on in the background on Spotify or whatever. You don't have that physical thing, but having that artwork and mm. the sleeve and the lyrics and everything, it almost, it, I don't want to say retro, mm. but it gives you that feel of going back and having something yeah a hundred percent and it, it feels more real on the vinyl when you listen to it because it's yeah an analog format yeah it's like when you see a printed photo mm. as opposed yeah, to right. on instagram right 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 yeah it's exactly the same thing. yeah so anyway that's quite that's quite exciting and and that's good for me because i'm in it means i'm in a, a music zone at the yeah, moment. yeah i'm really enjoying my music at the moment yeah which is really nice i've been making some um playlists for my mates as well i'm on a, uh, a facebook group with some old mates and we just take it in turns to make each other yeah, that's cool. playlists, often with a theme, or you can't have more than 30 minutes, or only 10 songs, or yeah. this is whatever. And, you know, it I'm makes a, you start thinking about it. I'm a big fan of that 80s playlist you put on in the car. Oh, that's good, that, yeah. That's a good one. That's a cracker. That's like, <laughs> is it about 16 hours of yacht rock? Well, we had about, <laughs> what, an eight-hour drive both ways, and we didn't complete it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's just full of yacht rock and 80s ballads. <laughs> yeah. But it's cool. It's, it's great. It's great. It's a banger, that one. In um, the ocean. Yeah. Big fan of all that kind of stuff. So anyway, t- I didn't really answer your question directly. It's all given a bit of pretext in terms of my background yeah, yeah. in music. But um, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a musician. I have been my entire adult life. I'm beyond, really. Um, so it's always been super, super important to me. But again, I reached my um, sort of capabilities and I ran out of talent, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I got to a point. And I'm capable and I can... I'm a good groove player and I'm great with other musicians, but I'm, I never practiced very well on my own. Right. All my practice was within a, within a band. Right. And so when you're within a band, you, you 
listen really well and you play for this song and I, I'd like to think that people would say that about me that I play well for this song yeah but you say right drum solo though and I just fall off my chair I, I like I can't I don't have the chops to really be amazing and I work with incredible drummers who are far better than I am yeah who have sat and trained and been to university and practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced they're much better than me technically um but I think because I reached my ceiling in terms of talent, in terms of how I could do that, and I'm not a songwriter, I kind of sort of nudged up against the ceiling, I suppose, really. Yeah. And I still love playing. There's nothing that I love more than being on stage with incredible musicians. I'll never tire of that. Yeah. And I still get to do that through the other business. Um, I'll always be grateful for that. But it's kind of a means to an end for me yeah, a little yeah. bit. It's not my creative outlet, and that's why when I picked up the camera, as I said in one of the other episodes... I started photography five, six years ago. And it's like, boom. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's a whole, whole new, new world, world yeah. of creativity. A whole new world. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> you just need to load that up on the thing. So, yeah. And, and so I've always been to music. It's always been really important to me, but I have a love-hate relationship with it, basically. Yeah. But in terms of live shows, always want to go into live shows. Yeah. And I love dirty, sweaty rock shows. I love jazz. I love... Um, I love big arena shows if it's the right sort of thing. I just love watching live people perform. And yeah. I, I often prefer music, actually, uh, to listen to that I don't really understand or make myself. Yeah. So I'm massive into electro music and yeah. stuff because I don't really know anything about it. Yeah. I really like um, listening to just completely ambient beats or whatever when I'm editing yeah. photos. Yeah. Just, it's just something you can't understand, I guess. Exactly. I mean, my problem with a lot of traditional sort of guitar based music is I analyse everything mm. like it becomes like a part of my job yeah, yeah. and that's part of the love hate thing about it. I can't just relax and enjoy the music very yeah. often so that's why like electronica and stuff for me is great because I don't know how it's made yeah. no interest in learning how it's made yeah. I just enjoy it as a consumer yeah, yeah. but um, but yeah whether it's photography which I've come to latterly um, I'm still learning still learning all the time yeah. and I'm, I've not reached my talent ceiling yet I think that's uh, I th I th even if you do reach a talent ceiling, there's always more to learn. It might not be specifically a style of drumming you're into, for example, but you might get into jazz. Yeah. Or if I'm a, a wedding photographer, I could go down a street photography route, mm -hmm. and there's so there's always something different within that same thing. Hundred percent. There's so many subgenres on subgenres, and all yeah. there's always something to be learned, yeah, and something to explore, yeah. Um, but I didn't answer your question. My favorite ever gig, um, 2008, yeah, Radiohead at Old Trafford Cricket Ground. It's a great venue. It was amazing. It was like all the planets aligned. I lived next door at the time, yeah, in a building next door, so I could hear them sound checking during the day. Wow. All my mates came over for a party. There was about twelve of us, I think. Um, Drinking in the apartment, standing on the balcony, listening to the sound check, all yeah. the crowds. It was just like magic, summer's day. So even though it was a bigger venue? For me, it was. Yeah. I, I kind of feel a bit differently about outdoor ones. Cause it kind of right. feels festival-y. Yeah, yeah. And Old Trafford's obviously an outdoor venue. Yeah. Um, and um, I just got to go to the Rosie literally a few months earlier. So we were like totally loved up, having an amazing time. One of my best friends um, who I hadn't seen in six, seven years calls me up. Um, to go, I'm in Manchester this weekend. Do you want to meet up? I was like, oh, I can't. I'm going to I'm going to a concert. He goes, where are you going? I was like, Radiohead. He said, that's why I'm in Manchester. Oh no! <laughs> so, so you I saw him. Up, there. So I met with him, and we had this most amazing weekend with my pals and the set itself. Like it was, it was the tour just after In Rainbows came out, right. which is one of my all time favorite albums. Of anybody ever? Yeah, masterpiece as far as I'm concerned. And um, I was completely swept away by the, that time yeah you know by it, it was all it was just all the planets yeah, yeah. My personal life. it was just the most yeah. amazing show that will always i don't think that'll ever be topped for me i don't think i'll ever go to a, a show that meant more to me for so many reasons yeah and radiohead just happened to be the backdrop to it i think yeah. the, the the soundtrack to that moment in my life yeah, yeah. i think mine i've forever been uh oasis Noel gallagher fan i'm obsessed with them well more so Noel, probably because he is the creative one. He's the one that wrote ninety percent of the tracks. But um a few years ago he did a gig with I think it was Radio X or Absolute Radio. And 
it was at the O2 Ritz in Manchester. Mm. So he's like, he, I've That's followed a cool him. Venue. Yeah, I've followed him for years. He's obviously done Nebworth and all these massive gigs around the world. He plays arenas. So to see him in a tiny venue like that, where there's like a thousand people, is like insane. Mm. Doesn't happen often. Mm. And somehow, Holly, my girlfriend, managed to get tickets for it. So we we got there and we, there's, only, there's only like 1,500 people, but we got right to the very front. Mm-hmm. And it was just as he'd released Who Built the Moon, which is one of his solo records. And he went down a different path with it and he was split in opinion. And we were right at the front and he played that whole album in full from start to finish. And it blew me away. And then followed that with a load of Oasis classics. And it's like, wow. It ticks all your boxes. Yeah. Yeah. It's just and insane. The demo and I'm literally like forget. 10 feet from him. Yeah. And he's done all this incredible stuff from around the world. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Those those shows that kind of um, mean everything to you, they're, they're such amazing memories. Yeah. Don't forget them. Yeah. I went to saw, I, one, another one that sticks out in my memory was James Brown. Right. I saw James Brown supporting the Chili Peppers um, at... Manchester City Stadium like 20 years ago yeah um, I'd never seen James Brown I bought the tickets so I wanted to see James Brown yeah oh my god god oh, his band him just the performance just all around just mm. mind blowing all those major classics but see he's, he's sort of like his funk orchestra behind him two drummers on stage you yeah know, he had like compare dude coming on inviting in, introducing him onto stage and the backing vocalists were phenomenal it was just like musically it was proper music geek fest in terms of like quality of session player yeah, and musicians. Yeah. They were just unreal, really, really good. I missed out on Prince. I'm going thinking about <laughs> the memories now. I missed out on seeing Prince at, at Academy Three. Right. He did a warm up gig with Three Eyed Girl. At Manchester Academy Prince. Academy Three. It was only about a year before he died. It was a, sp- a secret gig. What? And, and a mate of mine invited me. I couldn't go or t- or some. I can't remember how it happened. I, I almost went and I couldn't or something. Or I'd, I missed out on a ticket or something, and uh, I met him. Him sending me pictures of him at the front with Prince, as close to you are to me. What? At the Academy Three in front of five hundred people. As a warm-up gig. I missed that. I missed that. <sighs> and then he died, selfishly died. So I'll never get to see him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my anyway. dad did see Prince. He went to the Brit Awards <sighs> once, and he went. <laughs> there's a whole story to it, which I won't go into. It's absolutely mental. Basically, his mate looked like James Blunt and got. <laughs> 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 he was at the that's time. That's how he got tickets. At the time, he was a spitting image as James Blunt. That's fantastic. But he was. That's not how he got tickets, but he got into this VIP area by saying he was by James Blunt. He was James Blunt. <laughs> fantastic. But, um, and Prince was on, and he came on and did this like twenty-minute set at the Brits, oh. and no one knew he was there. Wow. Yeah. Epic. Epic. Yeah, that is it. But the, the the thing about live music is that moment in time yeah. can never be repeated. Yeah. And those sort of like I was there things just they yeah, knock yeah. out on there. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's, I've heard oh, some funny fi- stories. I went to Foo Fighters night. before they were huge. Yeah. In 1999. Yeah. Me and my mate, I was 17. Um, me and my mates just passed our driving test, drove up. They were doing the Academy too. They were a small band. They yeah. just formed after the after Nirvana. Yeah. And um, we we didn't have tickets. We went, tried to get tickets, completely sold out. Yeah. Academy 2 says, so what, well, I don't know, capacity, maybe 750 or 1,000. Yeah. Um, and we went around the back to just put our ears to the door to hear the gig. It was a freezing cold January, and we were just wearing short, <laughs> you know, shirt and jeans, yeah. you know, thought we were going to go inside. Yeah. Stood outside, and um, the door opens, and Taylor Hawkins and Dave Grohl stood no there. No we just like, <laughs> and they said, do you want to come in? Like, we were stood there shivering. Yeah. So we went in. What? That's yeah. mental. Didn't get to see the show. They only like kicked us out. But um, what a show! What an what event that was. That's incredible. Yeah, live gigs. Eh? You can't beat it. You can't outbeat live music. You can't. So it means a lot to both to everybody, I suppose. Music doesn't it in different ways. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to be more of a consumer of music than a creator these mm-hmm. days. Um, I get my creative kicks from camera work. Um. And you can link trying to enjoy music yeah. more, step away from that analytical commodity based perspective around music that it's always been. I've been selling music and live performance for 20 years, it's ingrained in me, yeah. 
Um, when I sit behind on set, I, I never play drums now for pleasure. Which yeah, sad about mm. my my eldest Isaac. He's um, obsessed with drums. Yeah, we've got a. a, a <laughs> he doesn't realize how lucky he is. He's got a really high end electric kit in his room. Yeah, to practice on, um, and I just feel pretty guilty half the time that I'm not you imparting more, more knowledge and teaching him. Because it, for me, I'm point. not a good teacher. And and he's yeah. finding it on his own anyway. Yeah. And I, I know loads of great drummers and great teachers that I can get to teach him. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I was a drum teacher for years and yeah. I'm a musician. Why aren't I teaching him? But I, I I know, I'm not passionate about enough about it. From my point of view as well, look, I, I learn better when I teach it to myself. Mm. So if I, I, I had a guitar teacher when I was a kid. I quit within three weeks. Yeah. And then picked it back up myself and learned more. As I say, it's a similar story for me in terms of drums. Like I played religiously, obsessively, but I never practiced yeah. on my own. I'd play with my mates. Yeah. Big loud guitars, annoying the neighbours. Yeah. My bedroom was our rehearsal space. Yeah, yeah. And we used to play for hours and hours and hours every single week. And that's how I got good at playing drums. I think that's the creative side to it as well. Learning about how to do it yourself and learning what sounds good. <laughs> Whereas if you're just learning by a book, you just being told and you're remembering it's not the same as learning and like actually getting repetition yeah i don't think i don't think it's the same i think you're right i think you start feeling it for what it is um and I, i've noticed it with isaac as well like he he's not really interested in chops and technicals and yeah. rudiments and stuff but if i show him how to play a, a muse song or a yeah. fighter song he's like his eyes light up yeah he just wants to play the music yeah, yeah. um and uh yeah, I tried really hard to not get him into drums because, like, you, as a drummer, you're always the first to arrive, you're last to leave, no one notices you, you back, break your back, like, yeah. be a singer, be a trumpet <laughs> Turn player. Turn with a backpack. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, he seems, yeah. drums seems to be his thing, so That's we'll, em, cool, we'll embrace it. That's cool. Um, my youngest is more guitar, I think. Equally cool. Yeah. 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 Um, but... Uh, one thing I've really enjoyed with um, when I've started working with NPM and we're doing bits for UTC, mm. the events company and the band, is even though I'm not involved in playing music, I'm a consumer of it, being involved photoing it and filming it, I also find equally as enjoyable. So being involved in the musical arena. Yeah. But not necessarily so being on I'm stage. I'm surrounded by live music. Yeah. But not in a way that I'm affecting it. Mm -hmm. So I can enjoy it for what it is. Mm -hmm. But take some great photos. That's good fun. Yeah, I get that. I totally get that. I I, I would say I'm maybe a bit too close to the music mm. to maybe feel the same way. Yeah. Um, but I could totally understand why why that means something. And but the, the, there is this really interesting correlation um or, or pattern where musicians often become photographers it's really bizarre there is so many i there's a couple of mates i've got i've made through doing youtube who've got their own youtube channels and they are both musicians first and right. then they've got into filmmaking and photography afterwards and yeah. now they've got successful youtube channels. i know a lot of people as well it's myself really obviously yeah but like um one of my long-time collaborators I don't know what it's with for 20 years. He's now running a production company doing film. Yeah. Um, another guy I know, fantastic musician um, from Anchor Band, you know, Phil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great photographer. Is he? He started photography in lockdown, you know, like, it happens a lot. It's really bizarre. So that sort of made us think maybe we should look into this a bit more. We found a couple of sort of interesting, interesting bits of... Um, documentation and interviews and all sorts of things and apparently it's a thing um the relationship between music and photography is quite a considerable one um so i'm just reading from an article here from casualphotophile.com um it says what makes a trombone player pick up a camera a photographer pick up a violin or someone composed for both symphony orchestra and also a camera um, an informal poll by casual photophile Contributing writers revealed that 25% of the photographers that work for this company are practicing musicians. Obviously, it's a, for a fairly small test, yeah. but um, it would be interesting to see any bigger kind of like uh, data on this, I suppose, really. Um, and there's loads of different 
theories as to why this is. And I'm quite interested by what it is about music that takes you to photo or vice versa. Yeah, because I mean, they're completely different creative paths, really, if you think about kind it. Kind of are. One's, one's audio, visual, one's audio, yeah. Right. One, one sort of exception is that I've got a, a, a guy, I know a drummer, a fantastic drummer, um, by the name of Luke Flowers, plays right. for the Cinematic Orchestra. Um, fantastic, amazing musical collaborator, collaboration. Um, I think it's Luke, uh, or it's someone Luke knows, who has synesthesia. Is it synesthesia? I'm, I need to make sure I'm getting the... I've never heard of that. Let me just Google that. I'm, Google that. I'm, it's the right thing. Yes. It's when you hear music. and Sorry. When you hear music, you see things. So you see colours and shapes when right. you hear different. So if you play a certain chord, that might be red to somebody. Okay. You play a different chord, it might be blue. So you sort of see so visuals. So in your mind. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a very peculiar thing. Creating pictures in your mind. Yeah. It? It's kind of like, I think it's not too, I might be wrong, I think it's not too far related from perfect pitch and that kind of part of the brain that forms imagery based on what you're hearing. Right. And I've always been kind of jealous. Apparently it's very unpleasant at times as well because it's kind of like being quite, it's quite trippy. Right. Um, but it, it can mean that the music means something more and it helps you sort of shape what the music is when you hear certain things or certain grooves and certain feels and stuff you can see things. Right. So that's the only crossover I'm aware of yeah. in terms of audio and visual. A bit of a mental thing. It's, it's obviously quite a rare thing. It, I, it, I just find it really bizarre that there is the amount of musicians that tend to go to photography. Yeah, it's, it, it's something that happens a lot. Um, I'm going to do a bit more research on it because I'm really interested by it. Um, I didn't really, I thought it was just coincidental that a lot of my musical chums had become videographers and photographers yeah but it seems like it's a pattern it is an actual greater thing, than yeah that. It's, a, it's actually a, a proper thing on that do you want to have a quick quiz uh, you a want very, a quiz a very quick quiz go on that's a bit of a quick quiz quick quick quiz we've got hang on how long we we've got three minutes 28 we can do it we can do it name i have here a list of 10 famous musicians who are also photographers Ooh, that's a good one take a guess Bowie? No. Although he might be. We I don't know. See <laughs> He's not on this be. list, but he could be a good photographer. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else might be a good photographer? I, I could imagine the likes of Kate Bush. Also not on the list, but might be a great one. Um, <laughs> We're slightly limited in the I fact that I think I know has that a list of Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz. There's a big picture of Lenny Kravitz on this list. Right. If I'll you're that. watching on that camera, you might see his... <laughs> <laughs> Very big picture of his face. Uh, I can't think of any others. Who's on the list? Mick Fleetwood. Yeah. <laughs> nice go. link. Moby. 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 Uh, he, he's just an alt, altogether creative degenerate, isn't he? You know, he'll do anything to make things. Brian Adams. Okay. I think I knew that, actually. Graham Nash. Really? Yep. Uh, uh, and Lou Reed is another. <gasps> Really? Yeah. I just love Lou Reed. It's an actual thing. There you go. Maybe that's a good place to end it today. I think it is. Um, Thanks as ever for your listening um, to the Creative Pursuit podcast. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, Thanks again for all the fantastic feedback. Um, Good and bad and ugly. (laughs) Not ugly, actually. Not the ugly stuff. Um, We really appreciate it. Keep it coming. Um, We're going to um, continue making these podcasts. We're hoping to, we've had to rearrange our first interview. That's going to happen soon. Um, And keep an eye on the YouTube channel as well. Yeah, we're going to have some fun with it. What are we doing next week? We're going to make a bit of a travel vlog on our adventures around the country. (laughs) How many miles are we doing next week? I don't know. I don't want to know. It'll be a fun week. It will. And we'll have some nice um, vlog footage to to show for it, as well as all of our... media content yeah so keep an eye on the youtube channel as well cool. we are also on instagram northern.bowerhouse.media go and check us out and yeah cool we'll see, see you soon. on the next one music smooth man <laughs> <laughs>